Hey there, Sharon here, and welcome to Quiet Ambitions. I um, came out to my garden this morning to do some work, and I have not checked on my kohlrabi, apparently, in quite a while, because I came out and I was like, oh my goodness, I have issues. So um, I thought I would do a video about what, I, what this is and um, what I use to prevent this. So what I have, I believe, is cabbage worms. That's what it would have been in Colorado. Now I'm new to Tennessee. Um, it could be something totally different, I don't know, but it's doing the same kind of damage. And so, um, yeah, it eats up all of the leaves and really makes a mess. So let me turn my camera, well here, let me back up here. So this is my row. I have a row of just various things and I've got, oh, I think five kohlrabi plants in there and they're a mess. They're just full of holes. And so that's what I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so this is my row of miscellaneous stuff. I've got kohlrabi in there, I've got sunflowers in there, um, some comfrey that's just coming up, and then a nasturtium. What I did is I planted the kohlrabi and the sunflowers. I had some gaps in germination, so I just filled in with other things. This kohlrabi is all by itself. Let me show you what they do. Whatever this is that I'm dealing with is totally chewing through all of my leaves. Now, if this were a cabbage, it would totally ruin the whole cabbage head. You couldn't eat it. Um, you could feed it to the chickens, but I'm not going to eat it because you got worms in it. Luckily, this is kohlrabi, which is kind of in the same family. Um, and what we eat is this bulb down here. If you don't know what kohlrabi is, you'll take that. You'll uh, peel it. It's white in the center. Um, it's crispy. I slice it up and I put it in a salad. Um, you can use it lots of different ways. I should do an article about kohlrabi. I'll put that on my list. But right now I'm dealing with the worms. The larva actually is what it is. And um, so I found one on this leaf. These guys are scattered all throughout this. That is the larva stage of a moth. There's another one. Oh, there's some more. Gosh, there's a lot of them. Um, and like I said, they just eat their way through the leaves. You notice they're on this cabbage and they're, they're not even touching the sunflower. Um, I've got a flower down here they're not touching. These are, this is comfrey coming up. This is some radishes. And look, it's got probably the same thing. Actually, no, I think that's flea, flea beetles. I'm learning about all kinds of new bugs here in Colorado. But I thought it was interesting. Um, affects this and it doesn't affect that. So it really likes this family of plants. Okay, so what I use to treat for this worm, and even if it was any other kind of um, larva type creature that you're dealing with, is a product called Bacillus thuringiensis. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably slaughtering it. But BT is what, what people will, that's the phrase that people usually use. What it is, is it's some kind of, um, I don't know exactly how it works, except I know that you spray it on the leaves. When the worm eats it, that's when it will die. Okay, so um, I like, I use this Captain Jack's brand. Um, they're not sponsoring this or anything. I just picked this up at the store. Um, it is organic, and so I prefer to use organic whenever I can. Actually, pretty much always I use organic. Um, but this comes in a spray. You simply spray it on the leaves, get the underneath as much as you can because that's mostly where, where the, uh, the worms are gonna live. And within the next two or three days, they will eat it and then they will die. And it breaks the cycle. There's a moth that comes, lays the eggs, the larva grows. I believe it then drops into the soil, overwinters, and then it emerges again next year. Now, I'm not totally certain about that part, but I do know it's a moth that comes, lays eggs, and then it emerges into this um, larva that eats the plants. So, this stuff comes in a spray. It also comes in um, a bottle like this that you can, it's a concentrate, and you can mix it up either in a spray, in your own spray bottle, or in uh, one of those pump sprays. You know, the one with the little wand, and it's usually a gallon or three gallons. Um, I have one. However, we just moved and I cannot find it anywhere. I know I brought it with me. So that's my task for the morning is to find my sprayer. But um, BT, any kind of larva stuff, try it out. It works really well and it's organic. And so that is my recommendation. I'm gonna go spray my leaves.
just happened to think of um, another larva that I used to deal with when I was in Colorado um, was leaf miners. And so I thought, oh, I better go check my beets because that's what I would always get it in um, in Colorado. And leaf miner is again a small larva that is laid on the leaves. It is actually something that gets between the skins of the leaves, believe it or not. And it leaves like these little trails through your through your leaves. If you see it, you'll recognize it. It's it doesn't break the skin. Well, it does at some point. It gets in between, eats the flesh out. It's super super tiny, obviously. And it just leaves these little trails. That's the best word for it. Through your leaves. Luckily, I walked over to my beets and they are clean. I have no leaf miners in here whatsoever. Um, so that is good news. Maybe you don't get leaf miners here in Tennessee. But if where you are, leaf miners are an issue, BT again is another, is something else that can um, help with that. My guineas just decided I was big and scary or something scared them. So anyway, leaf miners, cabbage worms, the BT works really great. So you guys have a great day.